And we're walking around Newman's Flash, which basically is a lake formed by land subsidence due to salt mining in the area. And apparently the landscape is still sinking. A bit worrying. <laughs> a bit worrying, since we're moored on the edge of it. Oh, it's a freezing cold day today. What is it, Fran? It's got to be minus three, something uh, like that. Three minus three minus four, I think it was first thing. Celsius. So, yeah. Cold for us. I know, you know, those of you in Canada and such places <laughs> put up with much worse. But uh, we're softies. <laughs> but it's, it's, um, it's beautiful nonetheless. I'm really enjoying it. So, we are. So we're, there. we're well wrapped up. Again, I think the only things that are cold are my toes. My toes? <laughs> Perhaps my brain stopped working. <laughs> my fingers. So we're doing this uh, walking challenge, aren't we, this yes. year? Yes. A thousand miles this year, which means You've got to do an average of 2.7 miles a day. Which isn't a lot really, but... On the face of it, it doesn't seem. But if you have a couple of days sat at home doing nothing, yeah, then you've got to make up for it, haven't you? But we're on target this week. I think we've um, done... If we do three miles, just over three miles today, we'll be up for it. We'll be ready. And also, each of us have done more than that in individual walks. We're not counting that. So I think no. we're both over us. Yeah. target for this week but we've got a bigger aim in mind as well haven't we yeah we're planning to uh, hopefully all being well when all this nonsense ends planning to walk Hadrian's Wall in the north of England almost on the Scottish border and uh, proves that's going to be lovely isn't it because yeah. it's absolutely stunning up there Northumbria is a beautiful part of the world so we're really looking forward to that we're going to be camping I might treat ourselves to a bed and breakfast halfway along. To have a shell. <laughs> it's an 84 mile walk and uh, we're going to take about 10 days over it, aren't we? We're not going to rush. People do do it in four or five days, yeah. but um, the point for us is not just to get end to end, it's to, you know, enjoy it and have a look along the way. So we'll probably do... I don't know, seven miles a day, seven five, seven eight. miles a yeah. day, I don't know. Yeah. Just depending how we feel, we'll take our time. And um, obviously, hopefully vlog it and it'll be good fun. Indeed. So we're walking now to the birch forest I mentioned earlier, so go and have a look. Show you there. See you there. Apparently these pipes used to take salt brine waste and lime waste away from the salt mines often all the way to Runcorn, which is miles away. Guess to be dumped in the River Mersey estuary. This is what is it? Snow Archie. <laughs> <laughs> She's tried to catch them. I tried to catch the snowflakes. Oh, it's getting into rain. Yeah. Wonderful, Fran, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a winter wonderland. Winter wonderland. Mm -hmm. That's well worth the extra mile or so that we've done to get here. It's beautiful. We nearly turned around because it started snowing quite hard. Yeah. And our coats, although really warm, are not waterproof. And um, last thing we wanted was to get wet, but we've um, we've persevered. Oh yes. <laughs> Through thick and thin. So now we're going to head back, get a cup of hot chocolate. Yes. As you can see, it's a filthy day. It's uh, Wednesday the 20th. We've literally run out of water. The tank is empty. There's nothing coming out of the taps or the faucet. And uh, so we are cruising to get water. 
so we have to go a mile ahead of us so we can turn around and then it's just over two miles back to the water point and it's, oh, it's, it's not that cold it's just wet and horrible and actually this is the first time I think in three years of traveling that I've had to stand on the back with an umbrella because I'm already soaked through my trousers So let's hope the uh, water point when we get there is available and we don't have to queue like we did last week for an hour to get on the water point. Hopefully people have got some sense and stayed in for the day. So Brown's downstairs tidying up and then uh, when we get back to where we set off from this morning she's going to walk the dogs a mile and a half and uh, I'll walk them back the other way and this afternoon I've got to go into Northwich Town because I've got to, to pick up my prescription specs from the uh, opticians Oh and today's earworm is Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty could be worse Some cretin in a boat along this stretch of canal here likes to leave their rubbish on the side of the canal and also throw it in the canal. We've uh, been fishing out plastic objects that have been collecting around our boats for the last week and as you can see dumping their rubbish on the side of the canal. It's just beggar's belief. I mean, you know, it's a 20 minute cruise to get to the rubbish point. Unbelievable, just really unbelievable. What is wrong with people? Ugh. Are you coming out? Yeah. <laughs> Say, look, all dressed, ready. Bring it on. Oh, lovely day. <laughs>
Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Greetings. Hello. <laughs> We've had a, a bit of weather, Fran. Haven't we just? Yeah, it's been, um, well, we've had all sorts. Today we woke to a um, little bit of snow, which once we went out, developed into proper snow. Um, only down to a couple of inches, I guess. While we were walking, big snowflakes, lovely came back and the sun was shining so brightly there was steam coming off all the roofs with the melting snow and now it's set to plummet tonight down to about minus three minus four degrees again i think um but over the last week we've had everything haven't we torrential rain the local town northwich to where we are it's flooded poor souls that live in the town and um the road here has been closed, hasn't it? Yeah. Just behind us. It even uh, made the national news, didn't yeah, it? It did. It's Northwich itself. Yeah. Two of the two of the lakes either side of the road here have flooded and covered the road. And so they're pumping it out at the moment, aren't they? Yeah. The first we knew about it was when we woke up in the night and um could hear an engine running. And initially I thought another boater had got their engine on at half past one which is a little bit unreasonable and I guess for, perhaps they're really cold but these engines kept coming and going all through the night and this morning we realised that they were bringing tractors down um, trailing tankers and they were pumping the water out of these two flashes which are um, reservoirs from the sunken salt pits and uh, loads of water just pumping it out and trying to take it away and put it in the river but it looks like a bit of a fruitless task yeah, just, to me. Just, they've been at just, it all day and all night, haven't yeah. they? So nearly 24 hours. So yeah. Whether but, it's working or not, I don't know. Because I think there's a little stream that feeds one of them. So. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's wide. I mean, between the two flashes, there's a lot of water there. Probably, I don't know. The road was covered by three feet of water, I two feet said of so, water. Yeah, at least, yeah. So anyway, exciting stuff. But we're fine because for once the canal is above the level of the river which is very close and the river's flooded badly but the canal is higher yeah, we're above it. so it actually doesn't affect us at all apart from the mud on the towpath it's been a bit yucky hasn't <laughs> it <laughs> it really yeah. is a muddy year this a year a bit of a challenge but it's yeah. okay but uh, we're still enjoying our little lockdown here aren't we the, the view out at the window isn't fantastic but there's all shrubs and bushes there and we've been feeding the birds and we enjoy yeah. watching the birds i made another of my little bird feeders which is hanging up and actually needs replenishing now and on the other side there are some reed beds and we've had all sorts of birds over there a woodpecker one day and oh loads it's been gorgeous isn't yeah, it sod's law is that when you get your camera out to film and there's none of them there <laughs> like last night oh man last night we went for a walk around the uh, lakes again and um, saw this murmuration of starlings. I've never seen so many birds in one go in all my life. Them, there was thousands upon thousands of them flying here, there and everywhere, making those shifting shapes that uh, starlings do. It was so exciting to watch. Yeah. And as you say, you had no phone, no camera. No. We had nothing. <laughs> so, so we're hoping if it stays dry long enough we're going to go back tonight but you'll have to wait till the Dusk. next video if we get footage if we get footage it'll be in the next yeah, video i'll be there so. with my camera and not a dicky bird to be seen i'll be <laughs> but never mess nevertheless it's been a lovely place to be stopped i think we've said before but there are walks in every direction mm. and hundreds of acres of country park that we've been getting lost in we went for a walk one day and ended up doing nine miles instead of five because yeah. I think we just kept going around in circles but it is gorgeous yeah, I and enjoy it. such a lovely place if you live here yeah really good well you've had a parcel delivered today yes yep yeah. um the 
I was so excited about this. I've been needing something to um, uh, expand my weaving, but obviously we can't get things delivered to a boat. So one of our viewers who lives in the village kindly offered to have this delivered to her and she dropped it off and left it on the boat this morning while we were out. And this is gonna transform my weaving, I hope. So Paula, thank you so much for that. Yeah, very kind And of you. also, what did she yeah, leave us? Even more thank you for that. For that. <laughs> Cheers. But we didn't get to meet meet her and so you know, hopefully if uh, lockdown restrictions relax a little bit, maybe we can meet up with you. Thank you so much. But let me just show you what we've got. Um, at the moment when I weave, I have to use a pre-round warp, which is the longitudinal threads on, on the weaving loom. Um, and I can buy those and get them delivered usually, but of course during lockdown, I, I've not been able to go and collect them from anywhere. It's been difficult. And it's also quite expensive to buy these particular salary warps. And it limits my, uh, I don't want to say creativity, but it limits the colors that I can weave on. And you can make your own, but you need a frame to wind the wall onto when you're making it. And this is what I thought, and I'm so chuffed. You can buy these from um, proper big companies that manufacture warping frames, but this was from a man on Etsy, um, and I'll put a link to his, to his uh, shop there, because these are handmade. He's made it to order for me, beautifully packaged, little instruction book. Um, I'm so excited, but I think it might bring a few tears. It's a bit complicated. Mm. You're talking about hundreds of threads, six meters long that have got to be kept in the right order. Yeah. I don't know. It's best done without a glass of wine, I think. As well. I think it's best <laughs> done with a glass of wine, actually. With but, a glass of yeah, wine. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But um, yeah, once I've mastered it, I will show you because this is going to be brilliant. So, yeah. Other thing you've been mastering as well is uh, a new way of making bread. Yes. For us. Yes. That is, yeah. um, and again, that is going to wait for another video because I've obviously we make the overnight um, quick bread recipe, and uh, we'll put a link to the video that we showed that on originally. But we've now started doing sourdough bread, and it's working really well, actually, isn't it? It's the bread is Lovely turning bread. out. Yeah. When I remember to put all the ingredients yeah, in. Yeah, you keep forgetting to put salt in. <laughs> but it's quite complicated. Um, there's so many different rules and instructions for it. For making so the sourdough itself. Yeah, yeah for yeah. making the sourdough and keeping the sourdough starter is a live thing and you have to keep it alive and feed it. And I think at the end, it's not going to be complicated. I'm simplifying it right down so that by the time we video it, it will be foolproof and simple. Um, which is the way we like things here. It's just the <laughs> it's just the extreme of temperatures on the boat, isn't it? During the day it's yeah. warm and at night the temperature plummets, so it's trying to get to find the place where it can live and be happy. It is it's, like me. Yeah, much more <laughs> much more difficult than in a house. But I'm convinced that I'll be able to do it. Um I'll work on it and once we've got it set to a bit of a routine, then I'll let you know what's happening with it and we'll share the recipe. But yeah, Hopefully not buying any more yeast now. Well, I don't think we've got anything else to add to that, Fran. You got anything else to say? No, everything's just fine. Just plodding along in our lockdown life. Yeah, obviously, you know, desperate now to get moving and cruising again. This isn't what we signed up for, but um, it looks like it might possibly go on even till May now. So all we can do is keep showing you what we're doing. <laughs> we've had no news about the boat. To be honest, we've just let them get on with it for the last couple of weeks or so uh, without pestering them. Um, but we'll have a chat with them next week and uh, see what's new. So hopefully yeah. maybe next time we'll have some new pictures yes. to show. Yeah. It's such a shame that this lockdown this year has happened as it has because we were going to do a full-blown boat build from start yeah. to end and it's not been possible but uh, there were even plans for us to go and see the engine being built at yeah. the factory yeah. but obviously that's not essential travel um so so know. a lot of things you know it's had to fall by the wayside but uh, we'll make up for it when we're on board at the end of february yeah touch wood yes and uh well that's all we've got to say yeah 
So, thumbs up. Thank you very much for giving them. <laughs> so, give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And a massive thank you to all our patrons who uh, contribute every month. To those that are buying... Buys things like this for us, doesn't it? It yeah. helps to buy all our bits and pieces, doesn't it? And for those that have bought paintings of mine and scarves of friends and those that just give us a one-off donation, it's brilliant. Thank you so much. It uh, helps keep the channel floating. Ooh, nice one. Thank you. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. Cheers now. Bye.